Far away from the boardrooms of the entertainment industry, in places like this nondescript office park outside Boston, the nitty-gritty work of selling starts with a simple questionnaire about bread. And now, what do you see as the disadvantages to eating grain-based foods? Today, faced with a nation hooked on low-carb diets, the baked goods industry needs to find out just how Americans feel about their products. Okay, I'm going to read you some different emotions. Uh, I've got a whole list of them here. For each one of them, I just want you to tell me yes or no as to whether or not you think you feel that emotion when you're eating white bread. Okay? Uh, the first one is accepting. Do you feel accepting when you're eating white bread? Yeah, I would, I would say yes, then. Affectionate? No. Lonely? No. Disappointed? No. Afraid? No. Trusting? No, I don't think that would be an issue. Would you feel uncertain? Yeah, a little uncertain. I've got one question. Uh -huh. Can I ask a question? Where the question was, how do you, when you eat bread, do you feel lonely? Have you found people say yes, they feel lonely when they're eating bread? Not a lot on this one. Welcome to the strange world of market research. Now we have to be careful because that's not politically correct to, to say women and inside. Where those who claim to have figured out the hidden desires of consumers are treated as gurus. We all come from a woman. We all spend nine months inside of a woman. So women are experts in the inside. Uh, Translation, when a woman buys a car, the first thing she is looking at is, do they have coupled? Cap you know, wh wh Dr. Clotaire Rapai lives in a baronial mansion in upstate New York. Fortune 500 companies and their advertising agencies flock there to drink French champagne, admire Rapai's many cars, and listen with rapt attention to his insights on the irrational mind of the American shopper. And we have to understand for each product what is the dynamic behind that. What is it that people are really buying there? Uh, we still have people that buy things that don't, they don't really need. Sometimes a product is not expensive enough. What sets Rapai apart from many other market researchers is his belief that consumers are driven by unconscious needs and impulses. My experience is that most of the time, People have no idea why they're doing what they're doing. They have no idea. So they're going to try to make up something that makes sense. Why do you need a Hummer to go shopping? Well, you know, in case I need to go off-road. Well, well, you live in Manhattan. Well, you do need a four-wheel drive in Manhattan. Well, you know, sometimes I go out and I go in. I mean, this is, you don't need to be a, a rocket scientist to understand that this is disconnected. This has nothing to do with uh, what the real reason is for people to do what they do. Rapai began his career as a psychiatrist in Europe studying autism. My training with autistic children is that I had to understand what, this, what these kids were trying to tell me with no words, because they don't speak. Wow. So then that's part of my training. How can I decode this kind of behavior, uh, which is not a word? Rapai claims that there are unconscious associations for nearly every product we buy, buried deep in our brains. One of my discoveries was that when you learn a word, whatever it is, coffee, love, mother, the first time you, you understand, you imprint the meaning of this word, you create a mental connection. And so actually every word has a mental highway. I call that a code, an unconscious code in, in the brain. Corporations love the idea of buying a single key to the psyches of vast numbers of consumers, a simple code that lies behind millions of individual decisions. Rapai gave up psychiatry and says he has never looked back. I have 50 of the Fortune 100 company as clients. Tonight, Rapai has been invited to speak to the Luxury Marketing Council of America. The premise of the council is to bring the smartest minds in marketing together and help us all figure out ways to get more money from customers with the most money. Rapai has been commissioned by a handful of big companies like Boeing and Acura to break the code on luxury. We're just delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Um, I don't believe what people say. So some people listen to what they say and they say, well, you want to buy that, you want to do this. People say. I want to understand why they do what they do.
I found this word, and with that, I want to understand you guys. And this is the word. I hope I didn't make a mistake, but the right spelling? To crack the code on luxury, Rapai conducts a series of focus groups. I'm serious. That's what I want to understand, how you feel about it. And anything for me is interesting. Money. Money! He takes his subjects on what he hopes will be a three-stage psychic journey. Past reason, through emotion, to the primal core, where Rapai insists all purchasing decisions really lie. We start with the cortex because people want to show how intelligent they are. So give them a chance. We don't care what they say. When people try to sell you luxury things, what kind of word they use? Well made. Well made. Nothing new there. And then we have a break. Uh, they're usually very happy with themselves. They say, oh, we did a good job and so on. When they come back, now we go into the emotion. And I tell them, you're going to tell me a little story like if I was a five-year-old from another planet. Exactly. <laughs> so suddenly they are into a mindset that is completely different. They don't try to be logical or intelligent. They just try to please a five-year-old from another planet. I will send you and your entire family to Maui. They don't understand what they're doing anymore. Good. That's what I want. At the end of the second hour, when we go to the break, they say, this guy is crazy. What is he doing? I, I thought I understood what we were doing. Now I don't understand anything. I mean, I get paid to do that. This is excellent. This is what I want. And we chose it for a new reality show. <laughs> That's what it is. A reality show. Right. Wait, there's 19 of us? You're gonna give we all have our rooms? That's they're going to give you a million dollars. They want to see how you spend it. Maybe if that's you a good thing. Yeah, right. Then when they come back for the third hour, then there is no more chairs. Oh, oh, what is going on here? How come no chairs? And I explained to them that I would like them to try to go back to the very first time that they experience what we're trying to understand. Rapai is hunting for our primal urges. He's after what he calls the reptilian hot buttons that compel us to action. It's absolutely crucial to understand what I call the reptilian hot button. My theory is very simple. The reptilian always wins. I don't care what you're going to tell me intellectually. Give me the reptilian. So I'm going to turn the lights off now, and we're going to all relax together. I want you to be in a mindset a little bit like the one you have when you wake up in the morning. You'll be surprised to see that things come back to your mind that you forgot for the time for 20, 30 years. It's amazing. The scribbles of consumers in the semi-darkness Half-remembered words and pictures associated with luxury somehow become Rapai's key to unlocking the luxury code. Once you get the code, suddenly everything starts making sense. I understand why this car sells, this car doesn't sell. You know, I understand why, why a small uh, 29,000 Cadillac cannot sell. No, I understand why, because it's off-code. Over the years, Rapai has told car makers to beef up the size of their SUVs and tint the windows because the code for SUVs is domination. Découvrez le caractère. He told a French company trying to sell cheese to Americans that they were off code. Par ses soins donne tout son goût au vieux panier. In France, the cheese is alive. You never put the cheese in the refrigerator because you don't put your cat in the refrigerator. It's the same, it's alive. If I know that in America the cheese is dead, and I've been studying cheese in almost 50 states in America, I can tell you the cheese is dead everywhere. <laughs> Then I have to put that up front. I have to say, this cheese is safe, is pasteurized, is wrapped up in plastic. I know the plastic is a body bag. because You can put it in the fridge. I know the fridge is the morgue. That's where you put the dead bodies. Yeah? And so once you know that, this is the way you market cheese in America. It just got easier to just say cheese. One, one word that kept coming up is, in the stories, and I think in, is, is a reach. reach. In Tuxedo Park, New York, Dr. Rapai is also nearing the end of his process. He's ready to unveil the code on luxury. Rapai's clients, who represent industries as diverse as insurance, automobiles, and fragrances, are filled with anticipation. Having together paid several hundred thousand dollars, they are convinced the code will give them a competitive advantage no matter what they're selling. I, I, I think the code we discover uh, was there already a long time you know, ago and is going to be around for generations and generations. We were not allowed to see the actual code. 
its secrecy is worth a lot of money to Rapai's customers. The content may vary, but the structure is the same. But the clients, many of whom have worked with Rapai before, are enthusiastic. So far, you're sold on what he's doing? Yes. I strongly believe in what he's doing. Strongly. Mark so Salmon is the vice president for development at Firminiche, a Swiss fragrance and flavor designer. We need to absorb, absorb the code, check it, create products that are in, in code, try to understand, looking at what is existing, what are the on code and off code. We're here because we are always looking for ways to be more competitive in the marketplace. Blake Emery is an executive at the Boeing Corporation, which has been working with Dr. Rapai for almost a year. The, the interior of our new airplane, the 77 Dreamliner, uh, much of that interior is based on research that we did with Dr. Rapai. Everything you see has an overt improvement, but there is also a hidden, unarticulated itch that we're scratching. And right. I can't give you an example of those. So in other words, the bigger bin, if you find out, see, there's an people obvious. see the bin as mommy. So then you yeah. make the bin <laughs> shaped like mommy, so now they get mommy out of it? Or is there another feature no. somewhere? You know, once this information gets out in the marketplace, once our interior is out there, the competition can copy it, right? You, you would say, well, why don't they just make a bin like that? And then they can do just what we did. However, if you don't really know why, we did the bin the way we did, you will not do it right. Of course, it's impossible to know if Rapai's excursions through the collective unconscious really uncover what drives us, whether to Boeing airplanes or any other product. Hmm. Thank you, Mark. But even if he is onto something, if I, if we you have to wonder about the net effect of reducing us to our most primal impulses. What about the environment? If the lizard wants the Hummer, right. then and the lizard's not going to listen to the environmentalist. Right. Then isn't it our job as aware people to to get the reptile to shut up and uh, appeal to the cortex, All right. to appeal to the mammal? Now you see, the problem is here is that if you if you think, right, the people that want to do good, not always do good. All right. So the people that want to do good, for example, let's say, okay, we need to make smaller cars, right, to protect the environment. Then nobody buys this smaller car. Why? Because they're too small. So then the result, if they're going to... Try Looks like I'm not going to win this one. After all, it's hard to argue against the reptilian the brain. Is we have to understand the unspoken needs of the people. It works. Good marketing research works. When we say it works, it means that marketers understand the real need of the customers. Sometimes unspoken. And they deliver. Give me what I want.